Okay, we are going to run through a quick example R session so that you can see how this statistics program works. If you're in my class and you used the pen drive installation that I created, then you will go to the R 2.10, it says R version 2.10 folder, open it up, and click Start R and that'll open up R. Now if you've installed R on your own computer then when you install it it should create a program group and you can open it up that way. So double click start R and that will open up your basic R console window and uh, it's not real fancy but it's very powerful. It's just a command line interface, not like Excel or Word where you just click to make things happen. You need to know commands to make things happen. So I recommend that you have a little sheet where you write down basic commands so that you can remind yourself. Here's an example of the basic procedures for a typical R session. Most of the time what I will do is open up a file that has data in it in Excel. And so this is an example file that has 93 cars from 1993 and it has 30 different variables or 30 different columns with different variables about these cars. And if we want to read it into R, then I go down to the bottom right hand corner of the data. Let's see, I went down a little bit too far there. There we go, the bottom right hand corner and click with the left mouse button and drag it up and to the left to select all the data and then I hit control C to copy the data and when you do you'll see the little dotted line bouncing around and that's really all we're going to use R for. After it's copied to the Windows clipboard to get the data into R you can type a name for your data set like car data equals read.dilim in quotation marks clipboard and this seems kinda weird but what you're telling R is name a data set car data by reading in data from the Windows clipboard and hit enter and nothing happens well it's actually happened but here's a couple of ways you can check to make sure that it happened a basic way that doesn't work really well is you can just type car data and that's gonna spew all the data out so it's hard to see what's going on Another way is to type fix car data and this will open up another little window here that's more like a spreadsheet window with the variable names and all the data there and you can actually double click one of these entries if you had to fix, that's why they call it fix, uh, one of these variables. You can double click in there and edit it but we won't do that because we don't want to mess any other data up. And if you're satisfied that it looks okay, then you can just close that with the X. Then uh, another thing you could do, this is what I do. I recommend doing a summary of the data car data. And this will tell you the variable names as R understands them. It puts dots in where spaces are in variable names. It also put dots in if there's a question mark or another kind of symbol in there. It also tells you for qualitative variables a part of a frequency distribution. There are eight Chevys, eight Fords. It also tells you the minimum, maximum, average, median, and the quartiles for your data. You want to double check at this point that all of your quantitative variables have averages and minimums because uh, sometimes if there's a problem reading in the data, for example, if you have dollar signs in your data or commas in your data uh, for thousands, it will read in your data, even though it's quantitative, it will think that your data is words. So you need to get rid of the commas in Excel. Um, and if it's read it in correctly, you'll see means if not, you'll see R try to do a frequency distribution of your data. So uh, other basic things we can do. Uh, the next thing you'll usually want to do is attach your data. Now, why? Let, let me show you what happens if you don't attach your data. 
Suppose I wanted to do a summary, uh, not a summary, but I wanted to do some calculations on a variable such as HP, that's horsepower. Then we could do something like the mean of horsepower. What R is telling me is I don't know where to find horsepower. You haven't told me. So if you attach this data set, because many times you'll have more than one data set in R, you attach the car data. You're telling R, if I tell you a variable name, look inside the car data set to find that data. And now if you do the mean of HP, it knows where to find it. And it tells you that the average horsepower of these cars is 143. Now this makes a lot of other things pretty easy as well. We can, for example, do a histogram of the average price, AVP. One note, I have capital. AVP because up here in the summary and in Excel this variable is called capital A small v small p and R is very picky you have to tell it exactly the name of the variable here airbag one has to be small a um, drive dot train has to have the dot there so R doesn't really know what you want it to do unless you tell it exactly so let's do this hist AVP it'll give us a histogram and let me move the window where you can see it and adjust that and, and you see the histogram here of average price makes a nice uh, histogram and we can see that this data is skewed to the right uh, we can also do calculations like we could ask what is the correlation between price and horsepower core AVP comma HP tells us the correlation is positive 0.788 uh, pretty high correlation and positive for these two variables a couple other really quick common commands that you might want to do and the basic one for econometrics is a regression so you might want to do a basic regression here when you do a regression you want to give it a name like say reg1 or sometimes the way I name regressions is uh, car period reg one that means it helps me remember later on I remember that this has to do with the car data and it's the first regression I ran car dot reg one equals now we're gonna tell it what to save to this uh, output LM stands for linear model in R and you tell it the dependent variable you're trying to explain such as a VP tilde it says I want to explain average price uh, tilde you want to explain it with what variables well we could do HP for horsepower plus for example domestic and here's domestic this is a dummy variable for is it a domestic or an import car and you see the period at the end we have to include the period domestic dot close parentheses nothing happens well it did it let's make sure that it did it and it saved it LS open close parentheses LS for list list gives us a list of all the things in R that we've done a uh, saved so far uh, car dot reg one is the regression we just did car data is the data that we read in and S is a shortcut uh, that I put in for summary let me just show you how I did that because this summary is the command we're going to use in a minute uh, we used summary for the data set we can do if we don't want to type the whole word summary we can say s equals summary I've done this already but just to show you how that works and then we can just do s car dot reg one Oop, cart okay car dot reg one and hit enter and it shows us the output for this regression horsepower slope domestic this is a dummy variable this tells us the difference in the y-intercept for domestics versus horsepower but if we also wanted to include a uh, slope dummy I'm gonna hit the up arrow a couple of times to get back to that regression uh, I can do horsepower plus domestic plus HP times domestic and this will give me a, a different slope it'll allow a different slope for the regression and summarize it again and now I have a y-intercept uh, and two slopes and I have a also a difference 
and the intercepts for the dummy variable. So that's 10 minutes and I'm going to end this video now.